Elliott opened his account in the Kellogg's Tour of Britain for a third year as leader of the race after again winning the first stage. Now the Sheffield sprinter must defend his four second lead as the race moves through Wales to the Midlands. So Elliott starts the day as King of the Castle, but he knows staying on top won't be easy. Similar to uh, both last year and the year before, winning the first stage, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's always that much harder to win again and, and again, so uh, I'm, just gonna I'm just enjoying the, the win today. Again, the rampart of Cardiff City Castle plays host to a major cycle race in Britain. And today, of course, it's the second stage of the Kellogg's Tour of Britain, leading Cardiff and heading up to Birmingham. But yesterday, it was Malcolm Elliott who won the stage. He's now the race leader. While it was Robert Miller, the defending champion, who was in angry mood on Brassknocker Hill, he set such a pace only the Spanish climber Federico Echeve could follow. But on the descent, a group of riders caught up, and Malcolm Elliott won the day. Let's remind ourselves of the overall situation at the moment. Malcolm Elliott now leads the race from Sammy Morels by four seconds. Laurent Jalabert of France is third, seven seconds back. And Maurizio Fondriest of Italy leads a group of riders 12 seconds behind. And thank heavens that Andrea Taffy has his number on his frame this morning because he's found the head of Tony the Tiger. Fun and games inside the grounds here in Cardiff's castle. The field now rolling out. This is the route they face today. It's another long day in the saddle and another very hot one indeed. We head out to Newport up towards Gloucestershire via the hills of the Forest of Dean, Baker's Hill, then down to Gloucester itself, across to Worcestershire, and it's a ride of 123 miles. Malcolm Elliott is the rider in the yellow jersey. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> the riders congratulating Brian Holm, the champion of Denmark. And on the far side there, Soren Dillholt, former world junior champion. So heading out from Cardiff along the Boulevard de Nantes, with which Cardiff is twinned. And the field is spreading out here. Ryder has gone down in the centre of the field. And in fact, it is Daniel Steiger who's gone down the floor. And the report's also saying that somewhere down the ground is Laurent Madras of France as well. Heading out then towards the house at Caldicott, historic house at Caldicott. And the field is gently winding away, and it looks as though there's already a breakaway on. Main field set out this morning, 104 of the 105 that set out from Brighton yesterday. And now let's go up the road, because one rider has gone clear of the field, and this breakaway coming at 18 miles today. I mean, more than 100 miles still to go and all of the hills still to come. This is a very, very brave mood indeed. Well, this is, uh, this is Dominic Gard who's gone away here. In fact, Dominic Gard was well out of the back of the race yesterday and he's obviously trying to jump away today and hope that the race won't chase away behind him. Dominic Gard, a member of the Castorama rally team, and here's the first time check we've had on him so far. One minute, 30 seconds. So, Paul, the tactic was such a long way to go. He's not going to go flat out, surely. Well, he's not going to try and go flat out, but as we come to the sprint here at Chepstow, you can see he's struggling on this, uh, this climb at the moment. Interesting thing about Dominic Gard is actually he's a diabetic, so he has to have insulin injections every morning before he races. Well, there's the result at uh, Chepstow, the TV time sprint. Dominic Gard gets the five points. Dave Mann, who defends the lead in this, and Moncassin is third. And he also is developing into being quite a good sprinter in this race this week. Still with the leader. Well, the lead, in fact, came down to inside a minute during the chase for the TV time sprint. But it looks as though it's going up again now. In fact, two minutes, five seconds. So it looks as though the chase came more for the points, Paul, because he's going back into his lead. Well, the bunch will have reacted there because they'd have been chasing to get those points in the TV time sprint. But as we go there, after 31 miles covered, you can see the race speed is only 21.7 miles an hour. So really, it hasn't been such a fast race at the moment. But Dominique Gard is building up quite a lead. I wonder whether the race will chase him. 
because he really isn't anywhere overall at the moment and there's still a very long way to go in this race. Well, his team cars up alongside him now. And the information he's being given, in fact, is he now leads by 3 minutes 18 seconds. Now he's got to make a decision, Paul. He's still facing an awful long way today and it's very, very hot indeed. Well, it is very hot indeed, but uh, Dominic Gard's a big, strong rider as we look at the back of the field here. Here is Neil Hoban, who's getting some consultation from the doctor, and I think it looks as if he's got a problem with his ankle. So Hoban, the former British amateur champion, who's turned professional this year, and he indeed has a problem with his foot, and it looks as though he is in big trouble. Now we're up to four minutes, five seconds, and the main field generally has regrouped. There is nobody away except the leading rider, Dominic Gard, of course. We're now heading out into the beautiful forest of Dean. So we're now climbing Berry Hill. This is the first of two hills in the forest of Dean today before we get the long descent down into the flatlands of Gloucester, where the Avon and the Severn meet one another. And uh, he really has chosen a day for because the temperatures today are the hottest I can ever recall for a Kellogg stage. Well, it's very, it is very hot today. So we can see the field now climbing up Berry Hill just behind Dominic Gard. There's the time tick. In fact, the time's going up five minutes and nine seconds. But Dominic Gard has obviously decided he's going to go for it today. There's a long way to go, but he really is piling on the pressure. And this is quite a, cle a steep climb. This is Steve Bennett on the left, and also Rolf Jarman, the champion of Switzerland in the red jersey. Challenging him on the right is Joseph Holtzman. Remember that Gard has got the major points at the front. They're spinning out for the minor points for the King of the Mountains. And Robert Miller is the rider in third place, the leader of the mountains, only fourth for Robert Miller. His confirmation, Gard, Holtzman, Jarman and Miller over the top of Berry Hill. So over the top, here's confirmation for rider number six. Three minutes, 30 seconds now, his lead over the field and 45 miles covered of the day's stage. There's where we are, right on top of the forest of Dean. Shortly, the long descent down towards Gloucester. So the hard bit of riding is soon to be over for him, Paul. Well, it is. If he can get over the top of the next climb and onto the valley, he's got a little bit of a time where he can rest and recuperate on the flat section. And hopefully the rest of the group behind, they won't chase him. He'll be able to carry on and build his lead up again. So more points in the bag for Dominique Gard. So his race today, a problem with main field, not really in vain. He's been in prizes all the way along the route. But there's definitely now a reaction from the main field. This is the second climb in the forest. And look at this. The field now beginning to split up on the way up the climb of Baker Hill. This reaction coming a little bit earlier than I anticipated. I thought they'd let him fly out there for a while. Well, it is a long way to go. There's still 60 miles to go from the top of this climb, and I'm surprised that there has been such a reaction. This is Rob Holden from the Banana Falcon team on the front of the, the, front of the, uh, the group here, piling on the pressure. Rob's a very good rider. He's ridden very well in the Kellogg's Tour in previous years. And that looks as if it's Laurent Jalabar with him. He's in the red jersey at the moment. That's the rider of the, the, the jersey for the leading young riders. So Rob Holden, the new British circuit race champion and a well-deserved title too because he's had a tremendous season. Second in the middle race this year behind his teammate Shane Sutton. And now just tipped on the line there possibly uh, by Laurent Jalabar over the top. Let's have a look. Yes, uh, God, Jalabar, Holden and Holtzman at the top of Baker's Hill. Now, the field are still closing in on Dominique Gard. Chance of a breather, perhaps, on the way down now, because he's over the hills for the moment, at least. But they're coming back pretty quickly, Paul. 1 minute 52, so quite clearly, they're actually to put him back in the pack. Well, there must have been some reaction there in the group, because that gap really has come down. But here's the rest of the field coming back into contention now. In fact, a small group here, Paul. There's been a split over the top of the climb. You can see the rest of the field in the back there, but there's obviously been quite a difficult descent there, and the riders here going clear. So God is going to have company if this pressure keeps up. He's now down to 52 seconds, and this group is chasing very, very hard indeed. Well, there's Robert Miller wearing his unusual polka dot jersey, as leader of the King of the Mountains in this race, and Stephen Roach on the far side, so he's come up to the front as well. This is a good move. Number one, last year's winner, Robert Miller and anxious to break the field here. So Roach is there, and it looks to me, Paul, as though Malcolm Elliott, the race leader, has allowed this break to develop. I'm surprised. It's very surprising that Malcolm's let this go away because he's in good form at the moment, and he should really have slipped into a move like this over the top of the climb. 
So here's Dominique Gard, and this group is now coming up, and there's no sign of the main field. This is a very, very dangerous move indeed. Stephen Roach is here. Phil Anderson is up here too. And Phil Anderson is a potential winner of this race. Laurent uh, Jalabert is here in the red jersey. There he is. And Patrick Robit is the rider just behind him. Stephen Roach we've seen. Miller is here. Gard is obviously here. So this is a very, very good move indeed, and I'm very surprised that Malcolm Elliott hasn't marked this attack. Well, there's some very good riders here at the main field. You can see the chase is being organised by the Tekka team for Malcolm Elliott. They won't want this break to move away because they've got some very good riders in that breakaway. There's Phil Anderson in there as well, Stephen Roach, Robert Miller. So really, we want to see the Tekka team chasing this group down. You've got Malcolm Elliott has got all his team at the front, and also here we've got the class team. Again, another team from Spain. They're trying to protect uh, Echave. Well, let's go back to the leading group because here we are now in the centre of Gloucester and the gap is now one minute and six seconds as the TV time spin is taken by God. Little surprise there because he was getting tired. Anderson threw in second place. It's still the Tekka team who are having to lead the charge here. They're quite clearly and well they might be concerned by the fact that Roach, Miller and Anderson have managed to slip them. And the class team are working too because they are concerned with their leader which is Echeve, and the Lotto team too, Paul. Now, why are they up here? Well, I think they're probably working because, uh, let's not forget, Sammy Morels is second overall at the moment, and he does have the points jersey. So he's, uh, that's why the, the Lotto team are in there helping these other teams. It's a very difficult race to control as well. There are only five-man teams, so it's good to see that there are two or three teams who have decided that they want to try and pull this breakaway back because it's a very dangerous breakaway group. Well, there's Bernardo Mazon Blanco, a member of Malcolm Elliott's Tekka team, driving along here. Now it must be strange for all the Spanish riders having to work for an Englishman on English roads. But the pace is high, and this chase has been going on now for 20 miles, and the time gap is beginning to fall. Let's have a look what it is. Well, they're down to just 20 seconds, so they've come back from about 1 minute 8 seconds, I think, the maximum we've been reported for this gap. It's now down to 20 seconds, so they're coming back. So the teams are working well. Well, this will be good morale for the riders in this group because they've been chasing for some 20 miles and they'll have the breakaway group in their sights now. So it won't be very long before... Well, there they are. In fact, they've just brought the breakaway group back. Well, Miller is still not in that group because this group looks to me as though it's split up. Roach has certainly come back. Anderson, too. Robert Miller must have tried to nip away from this group as they were being caught. We're approaching the feeding station now, so around 71 miles covered. And that breakaway has been away... Uh, since the 48 mile point so this has been a long hard and very hot chase indeed and there's miller so they picked miller up as well so the tekka team will ease up now they've captured the men they wanted we're now in the center of the city of worcester the next big sprint here for the tv times award remember this is uh, added on every day for the points and this is the leader of the competition dave mann who gets the five points this time through so that's going to keep him in the white jersey tonight dave mann then scores Roscioli is second, and Chris Lillywhite takes third place. Well, there's been an immediate attack. Three riders are clear. Franco Coccioli, Kurt Steinmann, and Andrea Taffy have gone clear of the field with Birmingham the next stop. So join us right after the break. Welcome back. This is the finish line at New Street, Birmingham in roasting sunshine, as you can see. It's 123 miles and five and a half hours cycling from this morning's start. It's an astonishing achievement by man and machine. And we're going to take you for a rare glimpse behind the scenes of the preparations. At Cardiff's rush hour this morning, the 22 teams had already been up and working for three hours. Support crews mixing the cocktail of vitamins, minerals and proteins for the drinks bottles. Each cyclist will get through more than four litres in a race. The mechanics have five race bikes, two spares and more than 20 reserve wheels to prepare. That means uh, brand new tyres, there's any cuts in the tyres, we've got to put a new tyre on, uh, the gears work and that generally everything is in first class working order. For the cyclists in the final few minutes before the off, it's time for a last snack and drink. Some psych themselves up, others are relaxed enough to give interviews, or like Joey McLaughlin, share a joke. Just a, a short time now before you start racing, how do you feel at this stage? 
Well, at this stage, like, the nearer we get to the start, the butterflies start flying even more. You're, um, like, when you wake up in the morning, you're not really too excited about the race because you're getting out of bed and you still haven't realised what's in store for you. But then when you start looking through the, the road book and you start looking at the map and you look at this kind of thing here and you see, well, there's one climb here and there's another climb here to finish, then you start getting into your mind and uh, what's, what's ahead of you. When you consider they've been cycling today in scorching temperatures, you'll understand that those cyclists are amongst the fittest sportsmen in the world. We're getting word now that they're close to Birmingham city centre. They've got four laps to do here. And so we'll return right away to the action and fill. Thank you, Chris. And let's catch up straight away with the final TV time sprint. Here it is at Bromsgrove. Coccioli was the winner there. Steinman was in second place. And in third place was Taffy. The same three men who broke clear coming out of Worcester and now we are entering Birmingham city centre and the finishing circuit where the riders face four full circuits of the city centre and these three riders Paul have built a lead of over two minutes but it's now come down to about one and a half well it's coming down rapidly now as the teams are starting to chase quite a lot behind but they made a brilliant move these riders because it's been very hard all day there have been teams chasing to bring back breakaways it's been very hot and that's why these three have managed to slip away from the field but uh, it's, it waits to be seen whether they can stay away because they've, uh, they've built up a maximum lead of over two and a half minutes but as you say it is coming down very rapidly here's uh, Gocioli on the front now he stands up to, to gain the best here he could put the yellow jersey on well he's lying 35th this morning but more importantly than his position he's only 52 seconds behind malcolm elliott and the latest information we have the breakaway group here is one minute and 20 seconds in front so coccioli has a real chance now of finishing this race in the race lead tonight as we go off down towards uh, new street and the three riders heading off for the first of four full circuits so they've been away since worcester it's been a long break, and this looks like Soren Lilholt, who's gone clear. Well, he's only just gone clear. He must have broken away in the streets of the city of Birmingham. Former junior world champion, and a rider who specializes in the lone escape, and very good at it he is too. That's Rob Holden going too. And it looks like Roscioli, the teammate of Coccioli, who's sitting on the front of the bunch, trying to deter too many people sprinting off. Well, he is, and also at the front of the bunch there was Robert Miller and Stephen Roach, not too far away. Here you can see Rob Holden jumping across as well, trying to get up to Soren Lilholt, but Lilholt really was storming away there. Here we've got a good shot of Lilholt coming into the corner. And here's the field now. They have four full circuits to go in pursuit of those three leaders, and the official gap is one minute and ten seconds. So Paul Coccioli is still in with a chance of this leader's yellow jersey and Malcolm Elliott trapped in the main field. Yes, but I'm sure that the bunch will speed up now and it may well be that they'll call because there we've got Coccioli on the front trying to force the, uh, force the group away, trying to keep those valuable seconds. So he could be the, the first Italian to put on the yellow jersey in the Kellogg's Tour, but the group is still together. Well, he's doing all the work, of course, because he knows what he has to gain here in Birmingham. And Taffy and Steinman are willing to let him do it because they're thinking more of the stage victory here. There's Taffy in second place. We are now two laps from the finish. The gap is coming down. The gap, in fact, now is down to 40 seconds with Lilholt hot in pursuit. The main field have not picked him up. And just look at this side of the heat today. In fact, these riders were calling for water over their heads halfway through the stage today. It's been so hot. And because of the drought, nobody along the route could supply them with any. So here's Lil Holt, and he's still going very, very strongly indeed, Paul, but he's caught in no man's land. Well, Lil Holt is in between the two there. You can just see the bunch at the back there. There's Lil Holt. He's got two laps to go, but he really is storming. It looks as if there's another break just uh, materialising behind Lil Holt as well. But Lil Holt is making a storming ride to come back to the front here as Coccioli goes through to the front again with Steinman there in second place. Well, heading round the back of the circuit, this is Corporation Street in the city, and uh, we've got the same three riders out in front since Worcestershire. 82 at the back is Taffy, in the middle is Steinman. Coccioli is determined to make all of the running here because the chance he could pick up the leader's yellow jersey, although that chance, I must say, is now slipping away. Solon Lil Holt, who's dangling just behind with the main field, and it seems, as Paul Sherwin says, there seems to be a group forming, and in that group, I think, is Moretio Fondrius, and uh, here is Coccioli. So Coccioli still heads down towards the finish. It'll be the bell this time through for him, and he's still doing all of the work, as he has done all of the time since he came onto this circuit in the city centre. Well, they do seem to be losing a little bit of their impetus now. There we've got uh, a little attack going from the right-hand side, 
and it's Taffy just really trying to see what's happening there, looking back to see if anybody's reacted and sitting, sitting back down and probably getting back into the rhythm. But this is not good for this breakaway group because they are losing their impetus. Well, if they play around like this, Paul, they're going to have a lot of problems and we're catching up with the left rider here. Well, this is Patrick Dunut from the Lotto squad who's uh, a lap down. He really won't know uh, what's going on at the moment. There's the bell lap now. Cuccioli taking another drink. It's been really hot for these riders. Pours a bit of water over. They're all actually pouring water over their heads at the minute. It's all psychological with just one lap to go. Well, the yellow jersey, I think, has slipped away from the shoulders of Coccioli because that gap has come down. It's a question now, though, as if, uh, if anybody here can stay away now to win the stage. Because, as I say, they've been away since Worcester. They had a lead at one stage of well in excess of two minutes, and now it is down to just 20 seconds. Lil Holt is not far behind, but the group has split, and we understand that here is Lil Holt now. We understand that Fondriest, Jalabert, and Phil Anderson are in a group behind Soren Lil Holt. So here's the three leaders now. They're swinging up, they're lining up towards the finish here, Paul. The long straight, a very difficult sprint indeed. It's a very difficult sprint to judge, and they're actually playing a lot of cat and mouse at the moment, which is bad. And Mark, well, there, there's Lawrence, there's Soren Lilholt. Where's he come from? So Lilholt has caught them and jumped them, and really he had no choice here. If he'd have waited, they would have taken him. He had to go straight by, and the group behind is almost on as well. And look at this now as they go for Lilholt. The rider below us is lapped. This is the lead now. And we've got on the left, Coccioli. Lilholt goes on the right. Anderson's coming up there too. Phil Anderson and Fondrias is almost on the tail of these riders. But look at this, the battle of the front. Taffy on the right, Coccioli, and right on the line. Taffy has got it. Two Italians first and second. Well, that's a little bit of history here. We've never seen that before in the Kellogg's Tour over four years. Andrea Taffy, and I'm not surprised he's smiling. He's the first ever Italian to win a stage of a Kellogg's Tour of Britain, and Taffy has done it so well. Let's have a look at this again now. Taffy, I saw him win two stages in the Tour of America in February. He's now won one here in Birmingham at the front. There's the result. Taffy, 5 hours, 8 minutes, 49 seconds. Coccioli and Steinman, his two breakaway companions. Fondrias given the same time with Lil Holt in fourth and fifth place. So he survived, but you can't be closer than that. All five riders given the same time, despite the fact that the first three had led from Worcester. And a new leader tonight, Laurent Jalabert, who finished in that leading group, is the leader from Fondries and Anderson. Malcolm Elliott has lost his lead, and it's gone to Jalabert. Here he is with Paul Sherwin. Well, Malcolm, you're only nine seconds behind Jalabar, and tomorrow you're going to Sheffield. It's your home territory. You know the roads very well. Will that inspire you? Will you try and take the jersey back? Well, I think it'll be an advantage, you know, in knowing all the roads. And uh, when I get to sort of Matlock, where I'll know all the roads there, but uh, I know how hard they are as well, which uh, I know it's going to be a really tough day tomorrow. And uh, I don't know whether my climbing legs are, are going to be up to it. Jalabert is going very well, so is Robert Miller, so is uh, Stephen Roach. They're all going very well, and I'm going to have a, a work cut out just to stay with them. But uh, if I can get over the last climb out of Hallisage there, uh, with, with that uh, in the first group, because I'm sure it's going to be uh, split all over the place, then, uh, then it would be wonderful to uh, be able to descend into Sheffield and win the stage. So a great sprint win in the end for Andrea Taffe, who also won two stages in the Tour of the America way back in February this year. The riders should have taken him seriously this morning in Cardiff Castle when he pulled on a Tony the Tiger head because he certainly had the last laugh here in Birmingham today. Laurent Jalabert, the new leader of this race, always rides well in the Kelloggs. He rode here last year and finished fourth in the opening prologue time trial in Dundee. But this race still a battle of seconds. Now those of you out on the course today may have noticed there was no Channel 4 car in the advanced convoy. The reason? Somebody stole it last night from Cardiff. Now, it's not as if it's inconspicuous. It has a large Channel 4 on its roof. So if you see it, give us a ring. But from Birmingham now, we wish you all a very good night.